Hey YouTube, in today's deck profile, I'm going to do a deck profile on uh, my Genesis deck. So this is not my Astral Plane one. I do have the Astral Plane one. I actually built the Astral Plane, the Valkyrion deck before I made this one. Um, because when this deck came out, this one, so this is Himiko, but I was wondering. This came out when Euro Chronicle came out, which was like a year ago. Just about a year ago. Um, and I wasn't actually playing Vanguard when these cards came out, so I had to go and build these like after the fact. So the only decks that I played in Standard were OTT, then later Shadow Paladin, uh, and then now, and then uh, uh, Link Joker, and then now like everything, except for a few exceptions. Like if you don't see the decks on this channel, I probably don't play them. So you won't really see like Great Nature, Bermuda Triangle, uh, Dimension Police. There's a few others that I can't think of right now because there's just so many clans. But Spike Brothers might be another one. Um, but yeah, for the most part, I uh, expect to see a lot of deck profiles in here. So today we're going to be doing the Oracle Queen Himiko build. So this one is the one that takes more thinking. This one's actually harder to play than Astral Plane. Astral Plane's easier. This one's harder to master. Um, and harder to win with actually. So Astral Plane, Astral Plane, if you are able to bring out Valkyrion, if you survive your opponent's attacks and bring out Valkyrion, you pretty much can win. You have a good chance at winning. This one just requires a lot of thinking. So we're running four Oracle Queen Himiko. She is the main Vanguard that you want to use. Uh, she still losses five and puts a draw or a critical on the bottom of the deck, and that trigger activates once for each grade of your opponent's vanguard. So if your opponent's vanguard is grade three, you triple crit, or you triple draw. Um, and that's both effects, so that's the power and the draw, or that's the power and the critical. Activates three times. So it's it's cool, because it, it kind of does what Fortuna, which the card sleeve is, uh, wanted to do back in the day, but just couldn't really have that consistent ability. So it's kind of hard to pull off, though. So Himiko, she used to be a break ride card, but now she's just like a thing that just does stuff. So next we're running two Iwanaga Hime and you and I might actually take this out because this card has annoyed me a lot. Um, it only proved itself like one time in all the games that I've used it. Um, so I only run two copies of it. It's Soul Blast 3, it's Vanguard or Regard Effect. So it does have that versatility of me using it as a rear guard. But there are there is a better option in here over her, which is the card that came out in the trial deck that Valkyrion came out in. Uh, which is this guy, Perseus of Probity. I might actually bump this guy all up to four. I like him because his effect is Vanguard or Rear Guard. He has the force marker. So you can use him as the first Vanguard if you need to. And when he attacks a Vanguard, counterblast one, draw two cards, and put a card from your hand into your soul. That's a very easy to use skill, very consistent skill for Himiko. So, and it doesn't take anything out of the soul the way Iwanaga Hime does, unless you combo her with one of your, uh, you know, like your cards that make you soul, soul blast for free, essentially. Um, but I really like him. The deck doesn't counter blast too much, which is why I might actually bump him all the way to four. So, I feel like technically for optimal play. Uh, for Himiko builds, Probity is probably the best uh, alternate grade 3 for the deck. Um, like, when the deck was first built, back then, you couldn't use this guy. Um, but now that he's available, like, yeah, it just seems like he helps Himiko a whole lot. So that's the grade 3s. For grade 2s, we're running 4, Battle Maiden, Sahohime. Because she has, uh, you know, like... She can essentially Soul Blast for free when you combo her with another grade 2 or grade 1. Uh, and you draw 2 cards, put a card from your hand into your soul. So basically she does what he does, as a, but she's a grade 2. And then she increases the attack power by um, the shield of the card you put into soul. So what you want to do is you want to put a critical or a draw, ideally a critical, into the soul with her effect. And now with him, you, it could be either one, draw or um, critical. So obviously the critical skill is more useful. You won't really ever use the uh, draw skill that often. The only way it really goes off is if you soul charge it. And the way that that ha happens is with this card. So I'm running four strong bow of the starry knight, Ulysses or Ulixi. 
So four of him because this this guy is one of the best, or is it a girl? Um, it's kind of hard to tell. It's one of those uh, you know androgynous characters. But anyway, uh, Ulysses is very good because he doesn't have to hit or she doesn't have to hit. Basically, after it attacks a vanguard as a regard, you put it into the soul and you draw a card so it replaces itself, which is a plus. This is good. Uh, it doesn't just minus you, and then you soul charge one. So this is one of the few cards that Genesis has right now that blind soul charges. And blind soul charging, it can be good, it can be bad. Um, the worst thing that happens is it soul charges, you know, like, uh, you know, like just a grade one or two, probably more useful ones, uh, or it, it, or it soul charges like a heal trigger or something like that. That would be pretty bad. But if it still charges a draw or critical, it's not the end of the world. So it's one of the few cards, and this is one of the few decks, where when that happens, because it used to be you hated soul charging triggers. I know dark regular players really, really hate soul charging their triggers, especially when they like soul charge two or three, and they soul charge like two crits and a draw or something like that, or two heals or some, some ridiculous thing like that happening. Um, but with this deck, with him, you don't care. You actually want to soul charge your criticals or your draws. So that's really interesting. So four of him. And then three... Uh, Shitataru Hime, so sh three of her because she's the only other uh, grade two that's needed in here in the sense that she uses up Counterblast. Nothing really uses up Counterblast except for Saho Hime and then maybe Perseus if he's if he shows up that game. So we can run three of her to Counterblast and reduce the next time you Soul Blast by two and one of your rear guards or one of your other units, it could be the Vanguard, gets 3k power. So she can't gain that power. So that's something that people need to keep in mind when using her. Um, but she combos really well with Sakuhime because she essentially turns her effect into a zero soul blast. Um, but keep in mind that you will be counterblasting two for that. Because two, one for her and one for her. So that's, that makes it a heavy counterblast cost. So it, it kind of works good with Iwanaga Hime. It can also help Himeko because it will reduce the soul blast five to a soul blast three, making it more manageable. Um, but it is not the most ideal uh, card to use the effect on for Himiko. For that, we reserve that role for this card. So for uh, Mihikari Hime, so this thing, uh, four of it, because this card is very, very important to allow you to be able to use Himiko's effect multiple times that game. Um, essentially, you reduce the next time you sold last by three. So she can even make Iwanaga Hime free uh, which is one of the few reasons, because of this card, this is one of the few reasons why I still actually run this in the deck. Um, or she turns Himiko's skill into a Soul Blast 2. So if you actually combo these two together, she becomes only put the trigger and then it goes off like three times. So uh, really a central card. And then the other card that's very, very important for the deck is Witch of Cats Cumin. So Cumin... Uh, is very very important probably with the most important grade one along with the battle maiden because these two combo together she can bounce something up so you counter blast one when she's placed you counter blast one and rest it return one of your standing regards to hand and put a card from your drop zone or put a card from your drop zone into the soul so the reason why this is very important is because this allows you to put a critical from the drop zone back into the soul or if you don't need it, you can bounce uh, like one of these and then reuse this skill to reduce Himiko's cost. So you can do that effect again. So it's just very important to run these cards at the max copies. So four of each. Uh, and then next we are running four Witch of Frogs Melissa. And I really like this card because this card pays homage to the old Shadow Witches. I mean, the Red Genesis Witch is also like her. Um, but she has that effect where when she's placed from hand, you can Soul Blast 3. So again, it combos well with this card, or even potentially this card. Your opponent looks at the same number of cards from the top of the deck as the number of rear guards they have. So basically it messes up your opponent's, or potentially messes up your opponent's uh, rear guard lines. So you can force like triggers out if they have them. Um, so it could, and the, the effects don't activate too. So they, they fixed the problem that the witches had originally where like in the beginning they were good but then as more and more especially during stride era the witches became really lousy because they would replace a grade a rear guard with a trigger from the deck but so many people were running like triggers that had effects 
especially like on place effects that it would make make their skill basically useless um, or would help the opponent more than it would actually hurt them so i'm glad that her effect prevents any on call abilities from activating from the call so that's really really nice i think the witches originally should have always had that ability um so four of her because there's nothing really better to run uh, but she is a 7k body, that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, and then we are running two Swift Runner of the Clear Skies Achilles, because you can use this on the main phase if you really need that final soul, and it gives three units 3k power, so it can help get you that final soul you may need to do her final her effective final time, and push for game, powering up the field a little bit. So. Uh, that's the grade one lineup and the deck. The trigger lineup is very straightforward. It's just three Kushinata and eight criticals. So the draw sentinels, eight criticals, and the heals. And Artemis is a starter because we, for some reason we just don't have any other starter besides the trial deck starter, which doesn't really fit in here. So that's basically the deck. Uh, originally I did have an Artemis deck, but I took it apart for this one. If you want to see Artemis, I'll put it up in the future. Not in the near future, because I'm still using this deck um, along with my Astral Plane Genesis deck. So, hope you guys enjoy that deck profile. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and if you know any combos that I didn't explain in the video, um, go ahead and post them in the comments and leave a like. It really helps me. I uh, feel motivated to make more of these videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.